Hello there, Common Wolf from here. The Legend of Zelda Breath of the Wild reinvented nearly all of the existing Zelda provinces found in the land of Hyrule and its collection of countries, such as Central Hyrule which was a nearly completely abandoned wasteland with some zonal locations in its northern and western corners. Elden with its Goron city which for the first time was in the open air, the same goes for Laneru where the gracious Zora moved out of their cave systems to an absolutely magnificent royal seat. The Gerudo finally got to Gerudo town in Gerudo, but also some unwanted Yiga guests up north. And Farron remained a very old forested province for the most part, but with a rainforest and stone ruins twist. However, we also had a few new provinces never before named in the Zelda series, namely Hebron, the home of the Rito, filled to the brim with ancient ruins and snow-covered peaks. Nekluda, the new home of both Kagariko Shika and the remnants of the central Hylians, and last but not least the unpopulated Akala, which we reclaimed and brought settlers to with the Boston Building Company. Even so, some provinces are more mysterious than others, and in this video we'll focus on three which did not have any divine beasts or dungeons in Breath of the Wild and hence did not have the same lengthy questline with voiced characters. So be sure to press that like and subscribe buttons to support this video and join the realm, plus that notification bell to not miss future Zelda videos as we go inside Breath of the Wild's three most mysterious eastern provinces. Farron, Nekluda and Akala. Farron. This province is one giant question mark, as if for one, was completely optional to visit in order to fulfill the three requirements to obtain the true ending of Breath of the Wild. Free the Divine Beasts, reclaim your memories and pull the Master Sword before confronting Calamity Ganon. While in Farron there were no Divine Beasts and no memory locations. That should tell you more than enough that this province could be the most important province on the surface in the sequel. Filled with mysterious carved stone ruins of a civilization which has not graced these lands for tens of thousands of years. Long before the ancient Sheikah monks entered the shrines underground. A gigantic and varied province which boasts beautiful beaches in the south, valleys and a tropical resort in the east, plus fields in the west. At the heart of it lays the Zonai Ruins complex with its network of stone walls and plenty of statues, some of the Boar of Power and the Owl of Wisdom, but for the most part of the Dragon of Courage. The three animals represent the three golden virtues, which are also tied to sacred springs found in the three provinces we are exploring. Everything here is intentional, as director and genius Hidemaru Fujibayashi has planned, and the dragon heads and even Farish itself might just become the most important thread between Breath of the Wild and its sequel. Farron is just chock full of mysteries tied to these ruins, its outer and inner border marks, and jungle setting which stands in stark contrast to any other area found in Hyrule. It is wild, but at the same time also surprisingly good for the preservation of these stone ruins and bridges which are still used in the era of the wild. All parts of the main trade route which stretches from the bridge of Hylia in the west and then follows for the most part the eastern path of Farosh, the spiritual dragon, through the Zonai jungle, Lake Floria and waterfalls where he ends his journey before the eastern outer gate of the former Zonai domain. From here on out there aren't that many mysteries tied to the distant past, at least not in the form of stone ruins or bridges, but it is enough to just follow the trade route and end up in Lorelin, which is a massive mystery, a seaside tropical paradise, but also a village that we have never seen in any prior Zelda title, which naturally brings up a number of questions, like what is its history, who built and lived in it back then, and more importantly was this tribe tied to the so called Farron barbarians. Based on the swirl symbol of the Farron warriors it is possible that there could be a connection, but there were just not enough quests and more specifically storylines in Lorelin to give us the exposition that would make this mess of a Farron timeline clear. Even so, there are indications that this location is not coincidental and predates the Hylian presence in these lands. In fact, there isn't much Hylian here at all except for the listing that the people living here are Hylian, though they don't really look like it, which could be the result of mixing over countless generations, much like in the case of the Gerudo. And just like them, the Lorelin survived the calamity 100 years ago thanks to their remote location on the eastern edge to the Farren Sea. Or perhaps they had a hidden tool that kept the guardians away. Either way, this location was heavily underused along with the rest of the Farren province as a completely optional province if you just follow the main quest with memories, divine beasts and claiming the master sword. Hence lore was hidden in the locations here and Zonai connection to Lorelin might have to do with the fact that Palmeray ruins with its distant past ruins are located nearby. 
Combined with the ruins of Farron, the paradise of Lorelin, and the mysterious stone pillar of Palmeray need to deliver answers in the continued quest. And from Palmeray, we're entering the next sea, which is either named by, or has given the name to a second of three mysterious provinces of Eastern Hyrule, Necluda, primarily inhabited by Hylians next to the sea in the east, and Sheikah in the west. And these two mark for the two major story settlements but which is separated by a big fort which purpose differs from the other strongholds of Hyrule, since it doesn't protect from eastern attacks from the sea, but rather from inner directed from the west. Also, how did the Hylians end up in this remote edge of Necluda? The answer to that might explain how difficult the relations between the Sheikah and the Hylians were in the last 10,000 years until the reign of King Rome and his reconciliation. But even so, there are far older and mysterious ruins in Necluda, which ironically are not called Necluda, but Lenneru ruins. Not the province, but the mountain, as it is reached through Lenneru Road's western gate, promenade, Eastern Gate, and finally, an ice-cold path to the Spring of Wisdom below the peak of Mount Laneiru, the domain of Nadra the Dragon. No explanation is given about these ruins, but their shape and details are nearly identical to the ones found in Skyward Sword. As such, they have a different origin story to tell than, say, the Zonai ruins. How? As they might be far older. It is just that creating a champion just classifies these two categories from times unknown in one and the same bunch. They're just two, two big mysteries for time itself. Personally, I believe these to be our key to connecting together the chronology or the timeline of the Zelda series. A theory that we'll see if it stands the test of time forward. On that note, we'll from Mount Laneiru give the less mysterious Laneiru province in favor of the province that until we brought in experts, wood and people, was the only one that lacked any permanent settlements. Akala. That is if you finish the entire questline from the ground up and populated Tarrytown, the newest settlement in Hyrule. Though this is far from the first settlement in the area, since Tarrytown is built above what could be the ruins of a far older settlement from you guessed it, times unknown. In fact, the plateau Tarrytown is built on might have been in the past a stronghold or even castle slash palace which overlooked the settlement below. Eventually, for unknown reasons, the town collapsed and this once prosperous area became a lost civilization, which much like the Farron barbarians, only have abandoned and dangerous ruins to tell us of their presence and activity. Settlements that predate Hyrule Castle Town, which we know existed thanks to the Sheikah Tapestry 10,000 years ago. Mysteries which hopefully will be resolved while we continue exploring this world in the sequel, which hopefully will provide answers to Breath of the Wild's many questions. And one of them is Akala Citadel, the stronghold in the province that could defend from out the eastern, but sadly not inner western attacks from central Hyrule. And with it, here, 100 years ago, we got the last stand of the royal armed forces of Hyrule. The end of this massive structure, which we couldn't explore from the inside in Breath of the Wild, marked the end of the Hylian military supremacy in Hyrule. Age of Calamity showed more of its interiors, but is that all of it? Or is there more that is hidden within the massive citadel? And will it serve any purpose in the sequel now that the Sheikah Tower is gone, as seen in this frame of Link paragliding on the surface of Hyrule? Not only that, but also the mystery of the Spring of Power, which is nearly identical with Skyview Spring and Skyward Sword architecture and ruins of the goddess, ancient Sheikah and Zonai Farron barbarians. Three long gone from the surface civilizations which have created deliberate confusion in Breath of the Wild. And to think that we haven't even touched the other ruins that are not located east, though for a good reason, as they are pretty much more of the same found in Breath of the Wild's eastern mystery provinces. And in the case of Akala, there is one location that combines the ancient 10,000 year old Sheikah shrines and guardians and the far older Zonai ruins of the distant past which makes this artificial island into a riddle wrapped in a mystery inside an enigma. Pretty much the same way as Winston Churchill used to describe Russia, since Akala is a place that plays by its own rules. In order to settle down in Tarrytown, you have to have a surname or first name that ends with Sun. You have this ultra-modern town above a long-gone settlement, but below a fallen citadel that until 100 years ago protected Hyrule. Not far from here, you have the Spring of Power, which is another giant mystery in itself due to its location and continued purpose. An ancient tech lab and Lame Labyrinth are by all means is a testament of the combination of distant past Zonai architecture and later ancient Sheikah repurposement. A riddle wrapped in a mystery inside an enigma, which fits the build-up of this structure extremely well. 
mystery upon mystery upon mystery. Questions that require answers, which hopefully will be provided with new questlines in the three eastern mysterious provinces. Farron, Nekluda and Akala. But what do you think about these three eastern provinces of Hyrule? Are they as mysterious as we make them to be? Or is the answer right in front of our noses? Sound off in the comment section down below. If you haven't already, be sure to leave a like and share this video, as it with pressing that subscribe button greatly helps along with pressing that notification bell. This way you don't miss any of our upcoming Zelda, Breath of the Wild 2 and other Nintendo videos. Finally, a big thanks as always goes to all our patreon.com slash common realm patrons and in particular to royal producer Charles Shash. You rock and please enjoy one or both of these two awesome videos.